This is a do-it-yourself tutorial on how to stretch canvas on, uh, to a frame, a wooden frame. Canvas stretcher bars uh, come in various lengths and sizes, and uh, I picked up the cheapest ones I could find that were 12 inches. And uh, I, when I ordered my canvas, I ordered it a little bit bigger than uh, the size of my finished product so that I could stretch it over uh, the edges. Uh, these go together pretty self-explanatory. They go into the grooves and uh, they form a nice, tight, uh, mitered 90 degree angle. So we continue to form our uh, square frame. And uh, one of the things I learned uh, before I ever tried to stretch canvas is that when you're trying to make something square, you need to make sure it's square. So I have a big, big ruler here, big yardstick, and I'm gonna measure corner to corner and uh, check to see that the corner to corner is the same uh, on both sides. And if it is, that means that we're square and we are dead on. Uh, I have my staple gun, PowerShot Pro, nothing special to it. I've got half inch staples inside and uh, here's what I have learned to do. Uh, someone else suggested putting the frame over the picture initially uh, to see how that's going to line up and see how you want uh, things to square up. So I'm just going to lay this out like this and uh, take a pencil. I'm going to pull this corner up and uh, just draw a small little line right here on the corner where the corner meets. Pretty easy. And do this on all four sides because what this does for me is allows me when I flip the canvas over to the working side to know where my frame's gonna go. So move this to the side for a sec, flip over my canvas, and I've got four marks, one, two, three, and four, that I can then line back up uh, with my frame to know where this guy is gonna go. With this in place, the first thing I do is flip up the bottom edge of my canvas, hold it as tight as I can, and uh, place a staple. One staple goes there, and uh, I'm gonna do the same on the top. Pulling it tight again, and placing a staple into the frame. And I like to put a, a staple in each of the corners to attempt to hold the the frame together. Instead of using glue on a small frame like this, I've been putting staples just in the miter just to make sure the thing doesn't uh, move around on me. All right, so I have top and bottom. I'm going to flip this and do the same thing. One staple, again, pulling as tight as I feel comfortable and driving in a staple. Do the same thing over here. More staple there. Now I'm going to start adding one staple to each side of my initial staple and I'm going to do uh, two here, two there and kind of work my way out. All the time I'm pulling and holding and uh, I have not figured out the perfect number of staples for a 12 inch frame. Uh, I just kind of go until I feel like things are comfortable. I added two to those sides, now I keep moving. I flip it 90 degrees and work on my other sides, trying to keep things uh, tensioned or taut all the way around. Instead of just doing one side, I'm trying to continue to spread the staples across and around the whole project. Getting close to the corners, and with the corner comes the next step. I'm going to take and uh, focus my attention now on bending over this piece so as to leave 
leave a nice pleat on the bottom portion of the frame. I'm gonna add another staple here. Add another here to bring that close. And then in folding this pleat over, for me, a couple staples, a folded pleat, uh, leaves that corner nice and sharp looking. Again, my pleat is there, my 45, and my 45 is going to be right here. So I can drive in some staples and finish this. So there goes my 45 degree again. Fold up the bulk of this material. And I don't like the way that looks. Tuck that in a little bit more. Fold that. That hides behind the frame. And drive home some more staples. There's plenty of wood. Uh, to work with here so there's plenty of surface area to staple down all of these loose edges so that they will not uh, show on the final final project that's part of the niceness of a bevel on both sides so i can really make that look sharp and uh there we go one canvas 12 inch by 12 inch zebra finished